a fantastic day this is, it really is. Okay, welcome to Bex Bug Out Survivor. I'm Bex, this is channel Bex Bug Out Survivor. And this is returning to something I reviewed a few years ago now. So it's a re-review. Now, I wasn't really happy with the, the original video I did a few years ago. It wasn't very good. But I'll replace it with this because the tent has lived on and it's actually surpassed the videos. An amazing tent. It's in there and it is considered to be a motorcycling tent and it was actually voted best tent by Scooter Magazine. Now they have done a remodeling of this tent since I bought this. Now just because it's a motorcycling tent doesn't mean I have to have a motorbike. As you can see, mine is in the pack that I bought with me. The secret to carrying a hub tent like this is, and you'll see what a hub is in a minute, is you need to have the correct kind of pack. And I have a few packs. This pack just happens to fit the bill because it will travel my motorcycling tent actually in the pack. And although I haven't got my sleeping bag and my clothing with me. Obviously, I have tried with the sleeping bag, this tent and my clothing inside with my food and my canteen set and stove on the other side like that. Sundries in the top hood. Fits fine, travels fine. The secret is to get a good pack. Anyway, if you're here, I'm gonna take it that you're a kind of motorbike guy or scooter guy. Let's dive in this tent up and let's see if it still holds its own all these years later now it's not a lightweight tent it's never claimed to be a backpacking tent it's always claimed itself to be a motorcycling tent but like I said I'm just lucky with this backpack or rucksack that it actually fits everything I need in here. So what makes this tent so special and different from other tents? Like I just said in the intro, it is a hub tent, which is similar to a kind of a pop-up tent. If you picture it like an umbrella and you just pitch like that, then it needs pegging out. And obviously because I've had this tent a few years, I've learned a few tricks, tips that might help you with this. Just loosen off the pack and get this out. Now there is a bit of weight to this tent and this is not the original sack it came with. This is from the MWS sleep system. The one it came with was far too tight and awkward and time consuming to fit such a large hub tent in. So this is a spare MWS sleeping bag stuff sack. Because it's such a quick pitch tent and a quick takedown as well, I don't want the packing of it to be the slowest bit. And that is what was happening. I could pitch up in probably under two minutes, all pegged out and in. Uh, just put away two, three minutes once you get good at packing it away. Putting it in the carry sack it came with <laughs> took a long time it was tight it was difficult so the obvious thing is chuck that bag it came with give it something it deserves to have something easy to pack and it does deserve a pack like this to make it easy to access Bought a bag of tricks, which are some pegs and some spare cordage. Now, I often travel with a grabber blanket like this, silver reflective, and I use it like a ground sheet. It'll reflect some of the ground energy back into the tent. It's a lovely day, and I'm only out for a couple of hours while I film this, so I'm not going to bother with that. Right, I have modified it unmodified it wouldn't come with this color cordage 
it would have bright orange but as I'm using it for an urban um, setup I need to change out to a much muted colour of cord it's totally freestanding I don't need grass to peg it out like I said it just goes up like an umbrella and I get in and I could use bricks to tie onto these strings here uh, to give it some rigidity on the pack I have these here now I could use trekking poles but I've decided to go with these these are my army basher poles hardly ever used I don't use them but it just so happens to be great to pitch for the door on this once I've pitched it we're going to have a look at the weight of the tent and you'll soon see that it's not a backpacking tent although I'm happy to use it as a backpacking tent because I don't carry that much in this pack it'll be a tent a sleeping bag and some insulation under me like a foam roll mat or an air pad inside I'd have my cooks at in the other side the food sundries on the top me done me done so three items in the main body this is how I can afford to travel with heavier kit in a backpack is because I don't have a lot of it and I always say to myself I don't need huge amounts of expensive kit what I need is small amounts of the right kit and boy is this the right kit Now it's not even pegged out and yet in an emergency I could just climb into that if I got caught in the downpour. I doubt it that was any more than a couple of minutes to put up. And the secret is all in this pole system here, the exoskeleton frame, which is vastly upgraded on the 0.20 version that if you buy it now. And under the lid cowl in here, you can see the exoskeleton frame and there's a hook somewhere here where my finger is. And that hook clips into the top of the tent there. That will prevent it from collapsing in on itself in the night. But there are some better ways to pitch this, which I'll show you now. Now with this being a freestanding tent, as you can see, I haven't pegged it out yet. I can change positions to find better level ground twist it so I get the morning sun, turn it around to back against the wind. So I did promise you some tricks and tips to pitch this. I'm going to count myself five pegs. One on each corner and one on the back is enough to secure this. One, two, three, four, five. All I need and you're thinking, yeah, but if you're putting one in each corner and one at the back, what about the guy outs? Surely you're going to be at least four short to put this up. And in fact, I'm not. There's where the tip comes in. Because I found a flaw with the tent when I got it. And instead of panicking about it, just thought it all through. And the solution was simple. So here's the tent, totally freestanding. And the exoskeleton frame. And it doesn't take much to bend this umbrella exoskeleton frame in. And it's not meant to do that. Originally it had an orange guy, which was tied, I think, on here. On here. Onto an O-ring. Then onto the cord. Now with this being the weak point, the bit folds in when you don't want it to above and not below I just hitched a little bit of cord onto that and I do say hitched not tied so if this line gets wet I can undo it easily so I actually 
pull this cord which I already have a loop already in here and as you can see it didn't handle up in the pack and that is my staking out loop which pulls this weak point backwards on itself now in turn doing that I can totally miss out these here which are the very bottom peg outs right on the ground I can totally negate them completely because I can get it just as taut trust me I've had this tent a long time all I'm doing is cupping a hand under the exoskeleton frame pulling it towards me and at the same time tightening the guy rope and just nip up the line here once I've done the back in exactly the same manner it's going to be tight as a drum I pitch this plenty of times now I'm not going to film it but I'm just going to pitch out that one there that one there on the other side in exactly the same manner and then we can have a talk about the actual tent itself and I haven't used the bottom stake out at all it's just on four anchor points where I've shown you for the guy ropes on the weak points there and that's all it needs now I can actually open the door on this and the vestibule which will require another couple of uh, tent pegs so I'm just going to finish off the pitch now Now note how I closed the awning door before pitching it out to the vestibule fly sheet. Now it's actually on the crash zip, so I don't need to hold the zip at all. I can just pull it apart like a crash zip on an army sleeping bag. The Slummit own crash zips, or at least the tags are, I should imagine there's some kind of YKK but there you go there's your crash zip leaving this awning here hence them bivy poles or trekking poles or sticks to put the awning out let's grab my pack and I bought these especially to do this now I just use trekking poles a couple of sticks you can find whatever you want but just for quick access of filming I'm using basher poles okay one basher pole there and my basher pole is spiked at one end it's telescopic two part with a basket foot there so that basket foot is going on the ground that spike is going through a grommet on the actual tent and then I need to find some cord and a couple of pegs to guy out the awning first of all I'm going to extend the basher pole like that in two pieces connect it all back up back to the basher pole end that goes through the grommet of the vestibule door or the awning and stake out this section here to the ground
an awesome place this to do your coffee in the morning even if it's raining I can have well ventilated space all around me I don't worry about condensating the actual tent I'm just going to get you some info to read off I'm going to go straight in with the weight actually at 3.9 kilos which converts to 8.5 pounds so I don't think it's bad weight even in a backpack I do it but I only travel with three pieces uh, shelter insulation and a cook set and of course part of my insulation is my clothing so it's tent sleeping bag uh, a ground pad and a pack of clothes and it all goes into that pack and it's comfortable to carry the secret is finding the right pack its height 120 centimeters its width 220 and its diameter is 245 centimeters and I'll convert that to inches for you what else would you need to know it's hydrostatic head I we'll have 4,000 millimeters of hydrostatic head on the actual outer fly there for the vestibule it's this type of material it's not great I would really put um, a ground sheet under that just to stop anything poking through that but it's 10,000 hydro on that so on a personal level how do I work out hydrostatic head now this is only from my perspective and you might have a different way of working it out I like to have 1,000 millimeters of hydrostatic head per season plus a thousand so with this being 4,000 I can deduct a thousand to give me three 3,000 equals three seasons so not going to be a winter tent what is it like in the winds it is terrible and it will collapse in on itself unless you make that modification I showed you right at the beginning and yeah it does stand up to some strong winds user error one night I didn't hook the inner to the outer like that and it came down on my head and I was in my sleeping bag at the time and it gave me the shock of my life I thought somebody had jumped on me in the night uh, so yeah just make sure it's pitched up properly so you've got the dimensions you've got the weights of it you've got the hydrostatic head its price retail 130 pounds now that isn't for this this is for the mark ii with the new improved 8 mil uh, exo frame which is stronger they say and lighter but get shopping around get shopping around right now because i've just seen one not for 130 but for 88 pound 80 get surfing the net find somewhere the flash frame itself you can see it's an exoskeleton frame goes up like an umbrella is 8.5 mil and it's not going to be a carbon fiber for that kind of money it's going to be a fiber glass the improved model the mark ii is meant to have a far superior exoskeleton frame stronger and maybe lighter i'm not too sure i hope so right it has a lantern hook on the inside and a couple of pockets is there plenty of room what's it like on the foot and head space if i put a pad in there and then a thick down sleeping bag a pet hate of mine is it's so steep on its chamfer that my lovely down sleeping bag touches the wall of the tent making it wet i don't have that problem on this there is a ton of room on the inside It's got quite a high bathtub floor and I love ventilation ports high up like this one on that side one on that side there I hate having the ventilation low down here because it just blows over your face and over your legs little hook you don't get the carabiner just the little ring there and you may notice that mine is absolutely caked in filth. I have some mould build up there and there, but I've killed that. It's dead. I obviously assumed it was dry when I packed it. And obviously it couldn't have been. It couldn't have been dry. 
I had it in the shed for a couple of days. It rained for a fortnight continuously. Excuse me. It rained for a fortnight continuously. So I put it in the shed and it, it was damp. So I put it next to a radiator for three nights with the radiators on constantly. And when I felt it, it felt dry. But obviously it couldn't have been. Now the way to kill mould in the tent is bleach. Just a weak solution and wipe it on. It'll stop it spreading. It won't get rid of what you've already got. I would certainly take your time. Oh, God, here we go. Now the great thing about this one is the mesh is on the outside. So the mesh to the outside again crushes it. I got a cargo net on that side and another cargo net on that side so you can sleep head to toe with your buddy. So we have the tie back for the door on an elastic with toddle there. So between the mesh and the door is an elasticated toddle and a toddle here as well. So on a nice warm night, I can keep the door open and still have the mesh. With the X pad in, which is I think two meters 10 in length, there's plenty of room there. Vestibule door is on Velcro. So I just borrowed that bit of land off the farmer for a, a couple of hours. He's just come up to me and said he's letting the cows into the field. And I have quite an irrational uh, fear of cows of being trampled to death. I don't like them. 88 quid for an ex exoskeleton frame tent and that's for the Mark II improved version you're not going to go wrong other than the motorbike to put it on so until next time take care of yourself and I'll see you out there happy trails